So today I want to talk about something that has been evolving incredibly fast over the past few weeks and that's cloud code. Now if you are not familiar with the what cloud actually is, basically it's the agentic coding assistant that runs inside your terminal and it helps you build software through natural language. Alright so let me show you what's happening lately because there has been some massive updates that completely changes how you can use this tool. Cloud code has reached some pretty insane milestone. Just a few weeks ago in early December, Anthropic announced that Cloud code hit $1 billion in run rate revenue and this was only 6 months after its public launch back in May. That's absolutely crazy growth for a developer tool. Along with that news, they also announced they acquired Bun, which is that super fast JavaScript runtime that developer have been loving. The Bun team is also joining Anthropic to help build the infrastructure needed to keep up with the explosive adoption of the cloud code. Companies like Netflix, Spotify and Salesforce are all using it now, which tells you something about how production ready this thing has become. So the biggest update that just dropped is native language server protocol support, which everyone calls LSP for short. This is huge for anyone doing serious development workflow. What LSP does is, it gives cloud code the same code intelligence feature that your regular IDE has. So we are talking about jumping to function definitions, finding all references to a variable, seeing type information when you hover over something and getting real-time error diagnostic. Before this update, Cloud would have to read through multiple files and try to piece together what's happening in your code. Now with LSP, it instantly knows where everything is and what types everything has. The way it works is through plugins. And there are already pre-built LSP plugins for JavaScript, Python, Rust, Go and bunch of other languages. Another feature that completely game changing is background agents. This one's really cool because it lets you run multiple coding tasks at the same time. So for example, let's say you are working on building an e-commerce site and you ask Claude to implement the shopping cart functionality. While that's happening, you can press Ctrl plus B and start a background agent on the payment integration at the same time. These agents can communicate with each other and share information. So the shopping cart agent can tell the payment agent what data structure it's using. This parallel workflow is something that was not possible before and it seriously speed up development workflow when you have multiple components that need to be built. I have been using this for setting up AP endpoint while another agent handles the database schema and it just makes everything so much faster. Also, they have built out this whole marketplace where you can discover and install plugins that add new capabilities. Plugins can include custom slash commands, specialized agent, hooks that run at certain points in your workflow and those LSP servers I mentioned earlier. What I really like is that plugins follow an open standard so anyone can build them and share them with the community. If your company has specific workflow or coding standard, you can package those into a plugin and distribute it to your whole team. For example, you could create a plugin that automatically format code according to your style guide or one that runs security check before every commit. There is this feature called Ultra Think Mood that I have been experimenting with and it's basically a way to tell Claude to spend extra time reasoning about complex problems. You just include the word Ultra Think in your prompt and it allocates more compute sources to thinking through the solution before writing any code. This is super useful when you are dealing with a tricky architecture decision or when you need to refactor a large code base. For example, I ask it to create a real-time chat application with message encryption and user presence tracking and with UltraThink enabled, it actually spent time planning out the WebSocket architecture and the encryption key exchange before touching any code. The results are noticeably better for complex tasks, although it does use more tokens so you want to use it strategically. Now here is something interesting that just launched Cloud in Chrome. There is still in beta but basically it's browser extension that lets Cloud control your web browser directly from the terminal. So you can tell Cloud to test your web application, fill out form, click buttons, navigate between pages, all of that stuff without leaving your coding session. The cool part is that Cloud can see console error and client side issues which makes debugging front end code way easier. Let's say you are building a form validation system, you can ask Cloud to test it in Chrome and it will actually interact with your form, submit it with different inputs and report back with errors it encounters. This eliminates that constant back and forth of running your app, 
testing manually going back to code and repeating now the ai can do all that testing loop for you session management got a major upgrade too you can now name your coding session using slash rename and then later you can resume them with slash resume this is perfect for when you are working on multiple features or bug fixes at the same time let's say you start a session working on user authentication you can name it with auth dash refactor then start a new session for a different feature later when you want to go back to the authentication work just use slash resume and select that named session all your context and conversation history comes back the resume screen also groups related sessions together and lets you preview them before switching which help you find the right one quickly the memory system is another addition that's worth talking about cloud code can now create something called dot cloud slash rules files where you can specify coding conventions project specific information and preferences that should apply to all sessions in that code base so if your team always use a specific naming convention for component or has certain security practices you write those down once in the rules file and cloud remember them for every session this saves you from repeating the same instruction over and over the rule can include things like which testing framework to use how to structure imports what libraries are approved basically anything you want cloud to consistently follow there is also improved support for more terminal emulators now if you are using kitty z or app cloud code has specific setup command that optimizes the experience for those terminals you run slash terminal dash setup and it configures everything properly for your specific terminal including shortcuts and display settings this might seem minor but it actually make a big difference in how smooth everything feels when you are working in a preferred environment one update that developer will appreciate is better handling of language specific features the improved ime support means if you are coding in chinese japanese or korean the input method editor no position correctly at your cursor instead of appearing in weird places there is also better improved navigation for cjk text so you can move through code more naturally these internalization improvement might not affect everyone but there are important for making cloud code usable worldwide the integration with slack is interesting for teams that do a lot of coordination there you can now delegate coding tasks from slack directly to cloud code so if someone mention a bug in a slack thread you can send that context straight to cloud code and it will start working on a fix the conversation history comes along with it so cloud has the full background this bridges that gap between where team discuss work and where the actual coding happens there is a better support for aws bedrock too if you are using cloud through bedrock there is a variable called anthropic bedrock's base url that gets respected for token counting and listing inference profiles the aws authentication also gets smoother so if you need to refresh your credentials cloud code will display the output and guide you through it this make it easier to use cloud code in enterprise environment where you might be routing through bedrock for compliance reasons one feature that help with code review is the slash review command you can point it at a github pull request and cloud will analyze the changes look for potential issues and suggest improvement it examine things like code quality security vulnerabilities and whether the changes align with the project's pattern this is useful for getting a first pass review before human reviewer look at it the security review capabilities got expanded too there is a specialized security review agent that you can invoke with slash security dash review and it does a comprehensive analysis looking specifically for exploiting vulnerabilities it checks for things like sql injection xss authentication bypass insecure dependencies all that security critical stuff The output is pretty detailed and explains not just what the vulnerability is but how an attacker might exploit it and what the impact would be for teams that don't have dedicated security expert this can catch a lot of common issues before they make it to production so let me wrap up with a few smaller but still useful updates the theme system got better with improved message rendering for people using light theme or dark terminals there is a control plus t shortcut in the theme menu to quickly toggle syntax highlighting on and off the context command now groups skills and agents by source and short slash command more clearly when you resume conversation there is a loading indicator so you know it's working Email links in responses are clickable now which is handy when cloud references documentation for example and for mobile user there is now a QR code you can scan to quickly download the cloud code app for android 
letting you start task from your phone and review results later so those are the major updates to cloud code over the past few weeks the combination of lsp support background agents the plugin system and all these workflow improvement really transform how you can use this tool it's moving from being just a helpful assistant to something that can handle substantial portion of your development workflow autonomously if you have not tried cloud code recently now is a good time to check it out because the experience is significantly better than it was even a month ago the fact that they are iterating this fast and listening to the developer feedback is really encouraging all right so thank you so much for watching and i hope you enjoyed it if you did please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel and i will see you in the next video